And now we're going to hear from Mohamed Bagash, a system and software architect at Conchon, where he participates in the design of a wide range of embedded computing systems for avionics, defense, and transportation applications. Mohamed has a master's degree in image processing and a PhD in computer science. His research subject was parallel signal processing for hybrid processing architectures. Mohamed, welcome to our webinar. Welcome. Thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, in this talk, I will go over autonomous driving systems from hardware perspective. My presentation will be structured as follow. System overview, system design criteria, hardware choices. Then I will present deep learning as a general technique. Then quantized sized neural nets as new approach to optimize the computations. I will conclude by a comparison of the hardware architectures. Autonomous driving, AD for short, requires the ability to process large amounts of data at very low latency. AD is different from ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistance System, because it requires an order of magnitude, more processing power and safety certifications. Six levels of autonomy are defined by SAE, ranging from level 0, means no automation to level 5 as full car autonomy in all conditions. In general, AD systems consist in three phases, perception, planning, and control. Perception is how the car senses the environment in order, in other words, how it sees the road and the surrounding. It uses mostly multiple camera combined with a LiDAR or multiple LiDARs, a radar, or other sensors. The data is then captured and streamed to the next phase, which is the planning phase. I would like to make a point here that there are two approaches to the perception phase, where some prefer to process the data locally by the sensor and send just points of interest to the planning phase. This approach is very good in theory because it reduces the amount of data uh, through transfer and to process. But in practice, it makes the system accuracy lower than if the sensors, LiDAR or camera, sends the raw data to the next phase and let the AI find the correlations based on the full picture, not on a cropped and transformed version of the data. This approach is the one that I prefer, but on the same time, more challenging for system design perspective. The next phase is the planning phase, where the central processing a computer need to take a driving decision, for example, computing a steering angle from a set of images. For the processing unit, it can become a combination of like a CPU plus an accelerator device, like a GPU or FPGA, or for example, another CPU. Uh, <coughs> let's, let's take a look at those hardware architecture options. The first and obvious one is to use CPUs as processing elements. We can use, for example, the Intel 28-core scale KSP processor connected using QPI bus. The data is fed from the sensors using, for example, 10 gigabit ports, then processed by two big CPUs, which then communicate the decision uh, to the car. The second approach is to have a smaller CPU, for example, the Intel Broadwell DE 8-core processor combined with two big GPUs using PCI Express Gen 3 bus. The data coming from the perception goes first uh, to the CPU, uh, as you see on the left. Uh, the CPU sends it to the GPU memory, gets processed, then the GPU sends back the data to the CPU that takes the decision to be fed to the car. The last option is to use a smaller CPU, Broadwell DE, for example, again, uh, plus two FPGAs in series, as is uh, called also a systolic approach. And this option, the FPGA receives the data directly from the perception. The two FPGA will act as a streaming processor, the processor and process the data as, as a data flow data and feeds it to the CPU that communicates the result to the car. This last option uh, offers the best balance between data transfer and processing. 
In any embedded system uh, design, the following eight criteria are very important. Processing performance, data throughput, swap, that stands for size, weight, and power, heat dissipation, ruggedness, in other words, shock vibration, a high and low temperature operation, waterproofness, and so on. Ease of implementation is also very important. Maintenance of the system in the future, especially for the software, uh, not, not for hardware, but mostly for the software. And finally, the cost of the solution. We will judge uh, the, the three options later in this presentation based on those eight criteria. As mentioned before, autonomous driving systems use deep learning as one of the promising technologies for driving the car. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning that is also a subset of AI. Uh, what is deep learning? Deep learning is characterized by multi-layer network of artificial neurons. Deep learning is not a new technique. It started in, it, in the 60s with the perceptron and evolved during the 70s and 80s but never got widely used because it was far too computationally intensive to be practical at that time. Actually, with the GPUs and the processing power available, deep learning is becoming a very active field of research. The neural nets have multiple nodes that represent neurons. Each neuron has an activation function and some inputs and outputs. The target here is to have data flowing through the network from left to right and getting as an output a decision. For example, here, the network recognizes if the image from, like it's the X input, uh, is a car or not. The network gets trained on a data center for by adjusting his weights on the nodes to provide the most accurate result. As mentioned before, deep learning is a very active field of research and every month new techniques and optimization are published. This makes the decision to use such or such architecture more challenging. One of the most recent algorithms are quantized neural networks, QNN for short, are neural networks with extremely low precision weight and activations. For example, it's one bit precision. They drastically reduce memory size and access accesses and replace most arithmetic operation with bitwise operations, for example, XNOR operation. As a result, power consumption is drastically reduced and prediction accuracy, accuracy using QNNs are similar to the prediction performed using 32-bit neural nets. If we take a look at what hardware architecture can benefit from this research breakthrough, we can see that CPUs are optimized usually to run 32 or 16-bit operations efficiently, going to lower precision will not provide any gain in performance. For the GPU, they are also optimized to run 8, 16-bit operations at, at lowest. On the other hand, FPGA can handle, for example, 1-bit or 6-bit operation very efficiently. FPGAs get significant performance boost and power reduction using this type of algorithms. If you want to compare the three architecture, the GPUs are the best in performance due to the very high count of core and, it's, and due also to the SEMD nature single instruction, multiple data, nature of them. The CPU is the worst in this case. From a data transfer perspective, the FPGAs are the best due to the flexibility of their fabric. From a swap perspective, the FPGA is superior. The power saving using FPGA is significantly is significant compared to high-end CPUs. We can say the same for heat dissipation. For goodness, FPGA and CPU are the best. The GPU lack adapted form factor that are rugged enough, unless some special cases. For the ease of use and maintainability lens, 
The FPGA are difficult to program, even with the new effort to have high-level sanitizers or OpenCL compatibility. From a cost perspective, the GPUs are the best option. However, if the FPGAs become easy to program, this will increase the maintainability of the code, and then there is no doubt that the FPGA are superior option.